We're going to talk about school. And school is starting this week. And many of you guys, um, school started and you guys are have already started school. If not, you're about to start school. And with school, I think of a lot of different things. I think of sporting events. I think of homework. I think of um, all my friends that I connect up with. Uh, school shopping, getting ready for school. And that's one of those things that um, with going to school, a lot of things come to mind. And for me, um, I've been thinking, um, especially this year, about my life in junior high and senior high. About the things that I've gone through, the things that I wish I could go back and change. And I'd like to share those things with you guys today. And um, hopefully you guys can uh, look at those things and you can be like, all right, I want to live 2013, 2014 school year differently. So, uh, so four or five things I want to talk to you about. First thing, identity. Um, your identity is more important than your experience. When I was in high school and junior high, I wanted to be popular. I did, I did next to everything that I possibly could to be popular. Uh, I tried to play the sports that everyone was popular at. I tried to um, work up the social uh, ladder and who I hung out with and uh, who I tried to date. If I dated someone who was popular, then I'd have an opportunity to be someone popular. Um, and I missed out on some key things that, as a Christian, were more important. Your identity. Your identity... A lot of you guys are, are brothers or sisters. A lot of you guys, uh, you are a son or a daughter. Uh, a lot of you guys, you might be a football player. You might be a cheerleader. You might be um, in the band. You might be in the choir. You, your identity is not those things. Your identity as a Christian is that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. And that he is the Lord of your life. And he has said that you are my son or my daughter. So your identity is more important than what you live. And so if that's the case, if your identity is in Christ, you're going to live your life differently than if you were to be the popular kid. Than if you were to be the one that everyone looks to. If you're going to be the one that um, is uh, cheating on a test or not cheating on a test, your identity is that important. Your identity says, I believe that Jesus is my Lord and Savior, so the way that I live my life is different. So, first one is your identity is more important than your experience. The second one is... Uh, it may not go the way you planned it. Your school year might not be the way you planned it. You probably have already gotten your list of classes, and you probably already put them on Facebook. And you probably already um, have a bunch of people that are saying, oh, I'm so bummed that I'm, I have so-and-so as a teacher, and you're probably saying the same thing. Um, some of you guys, uh, you might have that late night that you're, you can't sleep, and you wake up in the middle of the night and you realize you forgot a homework assignment and you said, oh, well, I'm not going to do it. Or some of you guys, you stayed up really late studying for a test and then you took the test and it just didn't turn out the way you wanted it to. Or your boyfriend and girlfriend breaks up with you. There's a lot of different things that could go on in your life that are going to be hard times throughout this year. And you're going to be like so bummed and so depressed because of these things happening. But God allows these things to happen to you. And God allows these things to happen in your life so that way you would turn and know him. Sometimes God lets bad things happen in our lives or hard times happen in our lives. So that way we show our dependence on him. So often we might go through a hard time and we... We, we try to fix it or we try to go through things um, on our own instead of turning to the one that has real answers, our Lord and Savior. So when hard times happen this year, I challenge you, 
to turn to God, turn to Him and say, hey, I need your help. I want you to be um, in control of my life. The next one is, you might feel alone standing up for the Lord, but you're never alone. The Lord is with you. As you uh, go about going to school and you have this, these times of hard times and you feel alone and you feel abandoned and you feel like nobody understands you, Jesus went through the same stuff. You're never alone. So I challenge you to stand up for your faith. I just challenge you to choose your friends wisely. That's a huge thing to do in, in high school and junior high. Your friends are either going to help you know the Lord or they're going to take you away from the Lord. And if you're viewing this and you're saying, oh man, I've got good friends, they're good, but they don't know Jesus, that's tough. Now, I'm not saying you diss those friends, but I'm saying the friends that you hang out with the most, the ones you can find and the ones that know you deep down in your heart of hearts, those are the friends that you need to rely on. Those are the friends that you need to trust in. Those are the friends that you need to spend a lot of time with. But at the same time, you also need to be outreaching. You need to be standing alone. And if you aren't feeling rejected, you're not feeling um, that, that you're going through a hard time at school, then maybe you're not standing up for your faith. And that is something that you have to take an evaluation of. Because you might be living your life in the comfort of, I am satisfied in the way that I'm living my life. Jesus didn't live that way. And he's our example. He's the one that we, we turn to. He's the one that we look to. He's the one that we, is the example. He was hated in his hometown. He would go back there and he would tell people about Jesus and they'd be like, about, him, about God, the Father. And they'd be like, Psh, no way, you're Jesus. You're Joseph's carp that carpenter's son. You don't know anything about anything. And so when we go back to school, I'm not saying that you you go and be a martyr, that everyone um, disses on you and everyone um, hurts you. But what I'm saying is when you go back to school, is Jesus and your faith, is it on the tip of your tongue? Are you willing to say, I believe in Jesus when times get really tough? I hope you are. And last, do it all for the glory of God. Colossians 3.23 says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for men, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. For it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for his wrong, and there is no favoritism. Colossians 3.23-25 Do it with all your heart. When you have a homework assignment, don't just do it just to get by with it. Do it as if God was standing next to you saying, Hey, I'm watching you. I'm with you. I want you to do awesome at this. I want you to do the extra mile on this. Don't just go and solve the problems and get done and move on. I want you to work at this as if I were your teacher. I was grading you on this. This verse can apply to many things. This could apply to your sports field. This could apply to your friendships. This could apply to going through these hard times. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. It's working for the Lord, not for man. Because when we work for the Lord, our reward is so quick and so easy. And, and it gets here and it comes and it, and it goes and it's gone. So work for the Lord, not for men. You're never alone. Your identity is more important than your experiences. You're going to go through hard times. But you are not alone. The Lord is with you. And are you living your life for the Lord? Instead of just living this life, just to live this life. 
So as we go to small groups, I want you to be vulnerable. You're going to be sharing what are the things that you are really struggling with. What, are the, what is this thing on this list that I just shared with you that you're like, ah, that's the one thing that I really um, need to work on this year. I need to stand up for my faith. I need to watch what I'm saying. I need to not cheat on tests. I need to, to take these tests and I need to study for them ahead of time. I need to not just skate by. I don't know what it is. But I want you to be honest with the small group. When you share with your small group, your small group is not going to go share this at school. This is an opportunity for you to go deeper in the conversations and, and the friendships that you have in this group. And you're going to be cared for and you're going to be prayed for in these small groups. So as you go, I pray a blessing over you that this new school year, that would be for the Lord. That you would dedicate this school year for the Lord. Not for, not for popularity, not for um, a scholarship, not for anything other than that Jesus Christ will get the glory of all the things that you do this year. Let's pray. Father God, I just pray you just be with these, these students as they go back to school this week if they haven't already. Lord, I pray that they would live for you, not for their own desires. I pray that you would um, give them courage to do what you have um, placed on their heart, strength to carry it out, and wisdom um, to put you first. Lord, I pray that you'd be glorified by all these things. We love you. Pray these things in Jesus' name.